Welcome back to part 5 of our series on realism and fantasy RPG combat, where we are going over and then providing commentary on the 2003 essay on the subject by John Clements. In this video, we will be talking about initiative and choice. Point number 5, initiative and choice. John writes, the standard mechanism for determining who attacks first in most games is an initiative role modified by a character's weapon speed and personal agility or reflexes. That sounds a lot like advanced Dungeons & Dragons with some aspects of combat and tactics thrown in, which does make sense given the time that this was uh, written. The problem is fighting does not really work this way. Speed and timing are different things. Any attack can only occur in one of three times, either before, during, or after the adversary attacks. Just because you have the opportunity to attack first doesn't mean you have to or should want to. The faster fighter, instead of striking first, can often delay and attack just as the opponent moves so as to counter time their action and thereby deliver a more effective blow. Or the faster fighter can choose to delay his action and strike just as the opponent has, voiding and counter striking in one action by taking advantage of the opening afterwards. This decision making occurs instantly in fighting and is why fights involve not just overwhelming the opponent with blows, but also pausing, feinting, shifting, and juxtaposing for advantage. Further, a weapon's speed, or rather its maneuverability as it relates to weight, is a factor in its ability to hit, not whether or not it gets in the first attack. Okay, so point taken, I suppose. I have been thinking a lot about initiative systems, because I've never really liked Dungeons & Dragons initiative for a couple of different reasons I can get into later, but there are definitely some new systems which use alternate uh, ways of handling initiative, but I agree that this is a difficult part of combat to model, and I'm not sure who exactly gets it right. He doesn't really provide any recommendations here, which is understandable, because when you're playing a game, it's difficult to handle all of that. So let's take a quick look at several different games here. When I said the D&D initiative system is one of my least favorite earlier, I was thinking of the basic 5th edition initiative. The problem I have with it is that it essentially decides a random order for the combat, and that gets locked in for the whole battle. There is supposed to be something about your character that determines how fast they are, their dexterity score. But once again, we run into the problem that this amounts to rolling a d20 and then adding somewhere between a plus one and a plus three, or maybe a plus four to the roll, and that's that. There isn't even much of a mechanical difference between the slow characters and the fast characters. The random element overpowers the relatively meager dex bonus and so a basically random order is established. Now, some people may like having a essentially random order because that's just the chaos of combat to them. With a large number of combatants, it's possible for it to take a not insignificant amount of time to get everyone rolled up and for the game master to record the turn order someplace on an initiative tracking device. And to me, this doesn't even model anyone being faster really anyway. To me, being faster could imply one of at least two things. First, being faster could mean that you act first in combat. Arguably, that's what D&D is trying to represent here, but it does this weakly by having the random element overwhelm the character's speed modifier, and the D&D combat itself undercuts this with the inflationary hit point system. It really doesn't matter who's going to attack first if on a hit everyone is rolling something in the range of D6s or D8s for damage, and then we have to go through 30, 40, 50, or probably even more hit points in order to bring down a foe. The best defense, I think, can be a good offense. If you strike first and can kill or disable your opponent before they have a chance to strike you, well, that seems like a really good deal to me. But in most D&D combat, you're not really ever going to be able to do that, so striking first starts to matter a whole lot less. So I consider initiative and the combat system's damage dealing to be intertwined here. Second, being faster could mean getting more done in less time. You're able to attack or perform more actions before somebody else who was slower. That doesn't occur in the basic D&D initiative system. In fact, fighters getting extra attacks as they level up might more closely model getting faster with your attacks anyway. The 5th edition DMG does provide some variants, like just using a static 10 instead of a D20 roll to decide initiative. That does cut down on the randomness, of course, and makes faster characters actually higher in the initiative order predictably, but it probably also stacks a lot of characters up on 12s and 13s. I like the speed factor initiative variant, which is basically how I remember playing a lot of AD&D. This is on page 270 of the DMG. 
players must announce their action at the start of each round, and then roll an initiative roll that is modified by the type of action they're taking, the size of the creature, and maybe some other things as the DM likes. Dexterity modifiers are in there too. This is done at the start of each round, and I think it works well. In the future, I might even consider making the initiative roll be a d10 or maybe a d12, putting more emphasis on the player's choice and decreasing randomness. Now, one thing that doesn't have is simultaneous action, but it could, and in fact, AD&D had that and we could add it back in. I remember that in AD&D, the initiative rolls were made at the start of each round of battle, but initiative was only the roll of a d10 for each side in combat, and the side that rolled lowest went first. That did embrace some amount of randomness, and did mean that one side might be able to go twice before the other in combat, which could certainly be a decisive factor. The system also explicitly made it possible for both sides to act simultaneously if both sides both happen to roll the same number. It says, if both or all sides roll the same number for initiative, everything happens simultaneously. All attack rolls, damage, spells, and other actions are completed before any results are applied. It is possible for a wizard to be slain by goblins who collapse from his sleep spell at the end of the same round. Being that there's a 10% chance that the two d10s will roll the same number, the simultaneous action should be reasonably common, something that you see happen definitely from time to time in combat. If you're doing an individual initiative system, then just apply the same rule to everyone who goes on the same initiative number. All actions on that number are considered simultaneous, and so all of their actions are resolved before the effects of those actions are applied. I'm running out of time for this video, but a discussion of initiative wouldn't be complete without mentioning the Hackmaster system. I got a chance to play Hackmaster at Gen Con with David Kenzer, the creator of the system, and I had a great time with it. I want to get into the system in more detail than I have time for here, but for now, what we should do is note that the Hackmaster system measures time in seconds, and whatever the character can do at a certain time, they simply do. According to Hackmaster, much like in real life, your Hackmaster character can attempt any action he wants at any time. For instance, in real life, to walk across a room, you think about doing so, start moving, and after a certain number of seconds, you accomplish the task. Likewise, in Hackmaster, if your character wants to take an action, such as crossing the tavern floor, you simply declare his intent, and after a certain amount of time, if there are no unexpected obstacles, he completes his action. Thus, Hackmaster has no artificial time segmentation such as turns, rounds, segments, or phases. In Hackmaster, your character's actions are measured in seconds by time and time alone. For instance, once a character or monster rolls starting initiative, the GM begins counting from one and up, each unit representing a second in time ticking away, as one, two, three, four, and so on. When the count-up reaches the character's starting initiative number, the controlling player may announce an action. Each action takes a certain amount of time. When you're done with one action, you can start another, and when the amount of time has passed to do that action, then you do it. For movement, each character has a number of feet they can move per second, so each second, if you want to move, you just move. This is best done with miniatures at the table. I didn't quite get this when I first started playing. The GM started the count up and I just sat there. On each count, the other players were reaching in and moving their miniatures on the table. That's when I realized I was supposed to be doing that too. My hesitation meant that my character had stood there out of the action for several seconds when the combat began. Now, there are a lot of things to remember in the Hackmaster system, but there's a lot I like about it. So later, I do want to look at it and see how its core can be used, but perhaps simplified and streamlined, but that'll have to wait till another video. So that wraps up this look at Initiative and Choice. If you've enjoyed it, please go back to my YouTube channel. I've got lots of other videos on tabletop gaming that you'll probably like as well. In the next video, I will get into narrating combat actions as a component to more realistic RPG combat. See you then.